Hello everyone, welcome along to today's video where after yesterday I reviewed the first episode of Class for tonight we may, might die. Today I'm going to be looking at the second episode which also came out on Saturday called The Coach with the Dragon Tattoo. In my preview video for Class on Friday I spoke about how I think the episode, I was expecting the episodes to kind of have a similar feel to the first series of Tortured where you have an episode focusing on each of the characters through the series because there's so many main characters you can't really have them all involved in the plot massively in every episode. And so for this week, understandably after the first episode, we have an episode that's very much focused on Ram, who's obviously lost his girlfriend, watched her be killed and have blood all over his face. And so it was a very much an episode that needed to happen now because of the trauma that Ram was feeling from that event. And we didn't really want to have Ram being sulky and miserable and completely distraught for half a series. So it was important to have this episode second in the series next up to try and sort out that, which is because this is one of the main, one of the main focuses of this episode is Ram's grief for the death of watching his girlfriend Rachel die and how he reacts to that and kind of develops him through the episode. He's, he gets quite a bit of character development through the episode and kind of becomes a bit of a better perspective on it I think by the end and feels slightly less depressed and miserable about it all I think. But in terms of the plot of this episode it focuses on this tattoo of a dragon on the side of the football coach, I can't actually remember his name but Ram's football coach and that's nicely interlinked with Ram being now used to football with his new prosthetic leg or special leg thing that he's got, which isn't very good for playing football essentially, so that that brings in a link between those two there, a bit of conflict and whatever, and we get all... The, I'm not going to... You, you watch the episode so you've seen the whole plot. But it did, and it did feel like we didn't get too many answers. It was never meant to have loads of answers because the coach has this dragon tattoo that's come out of this, the, the rift or the, the space-time crack, whatever we want. We don't have an official name really for it, do we? It's not like the crack in Doctor Who or the rift in Torchwood. It's not really got a proper name yet, so other than the spunghole of time or something like that, I think is what has been nicknamed, which isn't a very good name really. The, the, this dragon came through there and he, she ended up on the side in a tattoo on the side of this guy and then the male one goes around chasing people and killing people because he needs to feed the female one. But we never really learn anything about who this dragon is where it's come from, or really anything. So it, it very much feels like it's, it, it's more of a character study like we've had in a few episodes of Doctor Who very recently, remember The Woman Who Lived, which is a character study, which is the same with Ram here, rather than being a full on episode all about the plot as such, I think it's very much more focusing on developing Ram's character. And it does a very good job of that. Because we see through the episode from the beginning where he's seemingly kind of miserable, inconsolable, doesn't want to talk to anybody about anything, that through the episode, he sort of seeing, seeing this, alien dragon stuff and talking to all the all the group kind of thing again and especially speaking with Tanya who's very much his kind of best friend I think kind of is one of the one of their they, they, they're the close most closely linked I think of the four that relationship between Ram and Tanya is the one that's being developed the most so far and I don't know what it will be throughout the series and I said in the previous in the review yesterday that it does have somewhat of a feel of the Owen and Tosh relationship from Torchwood um, just a little bit, not it's not identical, but it does have somewhat of a similar feel. Just in I I would say. And so yeah, it it, it does very much. For, you can see how much it's hurting Ram to have this, have losing his girlfriend, and how he doesn't want to talk about her or anything. But then having Tanya, who's had a similar sort of experience, and I think that there then he's able to identify with her a bit, and they kind of help each other along, and eventually obviously get by the end of the episode that very important, I think quite important scene with Ram and his dad where he goes and explains to his dad what's happened, how I'm feeling about it all, kind of finally letting it out in the open after trying to just hide it all in and hold it in, but which isn't really going to help in that sort of situation. So there's quite, an, I think that's quite an important scene to move the series on and move Ram's character on, that final scene where he's talking to his dad because it just kind of gets it out in the open, he'll feel slightly more comfortable about it all and I think be able to move on slightly more positively through the rest of the series. Now obviously with this episode focusing on Ram it does mean that the other characters do kind of take a bit of a side, a side to it and aren't really that much of a focus in the episode and don't, therefore don't really get much development. I mean April and Charlie really don't have much and do anything in this episode very much. They're kind, they're in the scenes and stuff but they don't have any influence on the dragon, the plot with the dragons, they just see Mr. Armitage get killed, come to that in a minute, and just sort of stand around and have a chat really so particularly those two don't really have any importance but that's the nature I think of a lot of having five odd main uh, pretty much five main characters is that you're going to have episodes where you just can't really focus too much on one of them and therefore they won't really get too much on it so I think next week is next week's episode is focusing on Tanya then the following week is focusing on April and well last week we had it was obviously everybody a bit well the first episode was everybody a bit but it was also quite a lot on Charlie so Gradually through the series I think we'll get episodes focusing on everybody and then towards the end we'll probably, the last maybe one or two will be a lot of all the main characters back together like we had in the first episode. But obviously this, this then becomes a bit more of a standard episode I think compared to the first one where it was all set up, 
trying to set the whole series up and having all the characters trying to introduce everybody and everything it was all so much to try and fit into 50 minutes that obviously as I said it felt a bit rushed and a bit kind of too much crammed in at times whereas this episode it's a bit more bog standard I guess you could say what of a feel more, but it gives you more of a sort of clear feel of how the show is going to go I think for the rest of the series it kind of this episode, although it's kind of less dramatic and less, I guess, less kind of... It'll probably be less well-known overall. It's probably going to give you a better feel if you're unsure after watching the first episode. Watching this, I think, is a better way of determining whether you want to continue watching the series or not because it's very much more of a normal episode where you see all the characters, but it's more of a... There's not so much explanations and the Doctor appearing, all this kind of thing, a bit too over the top. So if you like this, continue. If you don't, maybe I'm not sure what you want to because... This is probably the feel you're going to get for the rest of the series. And personally for me, that's a feel that I like. Obviously, it is very much more grown up than Doctor Who. But I do find the characters interesting. I, th I think a lot of people have spoken about the um, target audience for this series because it seems to be quite specific. And lots of people talking about if you're not in the um, young adult of sort of, I guess, 16 to 24 maybe age racket. I'd say that's probably about what they're aiming for. If you're not in that, then you're probably not going to get that much out of it and be that much interested in it because it's very much focused on those sort of age people, basically similar age to the characters, the main characters of the show. If you're not that sort of age, I am, so obviously I'm able to identify it. I mean, they're in a sixth form college. I just finished a sixth form college, so I've very much got that kind of way of identifying with them as characters and the situation they're in. I think obviously I don't, don't have the alien side, but sort of the age they are able to identify with, where for someone who's 40, they're probably not going to be able to identify with it so much and maybe therefore won't get so much interest in it which might end up ultimately making the show less popular than maybe it could be and maybe Torchwood was and just overall maybe a slightly less successful show just not necessarily because of the kind of quality of the episodes but just because it's not something to appeal to a wide enough audience and I think that was always the kind of worry right from the very beginning when it was first announced um, last year that who's it seemed a very niche target market or target audience it didn't seem it's it didn't feel like it's going to include everybody and then putting it on BBC three as well makes it more niche. So I just I sense it'll be a niche show, if nothing else. But obviously I don't want to keep these videos too long and rambly, so just one other thing worth pointing out is the actually two things, I've got two more things. Firstly, Mr. Armitage, the um headmaster, so sad to see him die really, that's quite sad. Obviously he's he's been in a in a Doctor episode or two as well, back in um Into the Dalek, I think, and the Caretaker. I believe they were the only two he appeared in Doctor Who. And then obviously he was in the first and second episode of Glass, but they had to kill him. Why did they have to kill him? He was one of, the, he was one of our actual links to Doctor Who. You should have kept him. And he, was quite, he was just a nice character. He was a funny guy. He was just, it, was just, it was a bit disappointing. It seemed a bit wasteful. It didn't seem particularly beneficial to the plot. I mean, you could have had any bold person really being killed in front of them. Why did it have to be Mr. Armitage, I think? So that was slightly disappointing that he's not going to be in it anymore because he's dead. It was, yeah, that was just slightly annoyed me. But I can kind of see why they did it. It was just a little bit frustrating for me. And the other thing to pick up on is um, Miss Quill, or, yeah, carrying on in her mysterious kind of bit annoying role. She, she, she's quite entertaining. She's not likeable, but she's quite entertaining as a character. I think, I don't know really who to compare her to, to be honest. She's just, she, I guess she's kind of, and she's kind of another, yes, another female kind of strong female character like Moffat's been writing. This isn't written by Moffat, but like Moffat's been writing for the last six years, which I know some people are going to criticise there for. But I quite like her as a character. She's quite, she can be quite entertaining. And obviously the stuff she had with um, the Inspector, played by Jamie Reed Quarrell, who played Colony Saf slash The Veil in Series 9 Doctor Who. There's a reference for you. Um, he was in that there as the govern as the um, inspector who spoke, didn't spoke, and pretended to be a robot. So I'm sure that's a um, reference for the rest of the series, something important for the rest of the series about the government, this inspector being a robot, being made by the governors, whoever they are. I'm sure the governors are going to be some sort of plot point later in the series. I'm not quite sure what exactly at this stage, because but they're able to make robots and disguise as humans, so clearly they're aliens of some description. I wonder who they'll actually be. And one other thing. I keep remembering things that I'm going to say. This is the this is the last point I'm going to make, which is just a small thing that I liked was the um, mention of units and ta ta Tanya, who's um, a bit of a child genius, is um, hacking into units. So that's quite good. And one thing I saw someone said was actually really good, which is in a lot of shows and like when something like that happening, they're hacking into some secret organisation. They do it in five seconds. Whereas in this, they haven't done it. She hasn't done it yet. She's, she's she's sort of working on it through the episode and hasn't got it yet. So hopefully that'll be something that comes up later in the series. Maybe we'll get three, a few unit soldiers involved or just something linking to unit a bit more, which I hope will come up because I think that eventually she'll hack into it. And clearly it was mentioned two or three times, so it must be relevant, not just an off-the-cuff comment slash reference that we've had in some moments. 
I think it will be something relevant to a later episode where hacking into unit is important to find out some information or something like that or she'll get in trouble with it. I don't know, but I think it was something to watch out for. Well, I think that's pretty much all I'm going to say on this review because I don't want to make this video go on forever and take ages. But overall, I thought it was a very solid episode. I think it's going to be one of those ones that you kind of forget a little bit because of the first episode. You, it will always, always I think the first episode will be more remembered because it's got the Doctor in the TARDIS and everything all set up. It's going to be one of the most memorable episodes, probably the finale as well. But then that's the same with most TV series and Doctor Who as well, obviously. But so I think it was a very it was a very good episode of sort of mid range seven seven point five out of ten something around there where it was important for Ram's character it gave us some nice development of Ram's character and the relationship between Ram and Tanya in particular and I'm looking forward to focusing on some of the other characters through the next few episodes with it being Tanya focused on next week and one and just a quick preview I guess of that for a couple of minutes focusing it seemed to have some sort of relation to um, her dad seemingly coming back from the dead or something I don't really know. The episode's called Night of Visiting, not quite sure what the meaning is. I, I read the synopsis somewhere, but I don't really want to read it again because it'll just spoil it a bit, so I won't. Um, but clearly this episode was used because there was a couple of mentions of how Tanya lost her dad a couple of years ago from a stroke. So clearly that was put into this episode to set up for the next episode, as we see in the next time trailer, her dad appears again. So it was it's nice to see that linking together, I think, which helps when you have the same writer of every episode. Because Patrick Ness has written all those episodes, it's great to have because then you can interlink stuff a lot more and weave stuff in put something in which you're going to come back to in the future rather than having to try and slot it into someone else's script when it maybe wouldn't, wouldn't fit so well but when he's able to just write everything and link it all together perfectly I think that is a great benefit can be a great benefit to the show so that's great so that's that's so I'm, I, it's going to be interesting it looked very dark both literally and metaphorically for an episode, episode three. Um, so I'll we'll have to see what that is. But over this episode, I'll just show you there's a dark show. I mean, all the blood and gore of skinning people alive. Wouldn't get away with that in Doctor Who, wouldn't you? So it's very much not a kid's show. Thank you very much for watching this video then, guys. That's all I've got to say about it, really. I, I guess I could round a bit more, but you don't want that, do you? So let me know what you thought in the comments below of The Coach with the Dragon Tattoo, episode two of Class. Let me know what you're looking forward to for the rest of the series. Remember to like the video, subscribe if you're new here. Follow me on Twitter at EMS underscore productions where I'll be letting you know my thoughts, some initial thoughts on Doctor Who class, whatever you like really, and any new videos I'm coming up on here. And I'll see you again very soon for another video. Goodbye.